All right, hey everybody, it's Casey, Fast Brewing and Winemaking. Thanks for checking our videos out, like always. Uh, so we're gonna run through a little uh, batch of making some wine here, show you how, exactly how easy and simple it is in the fast ferment. Promise you it is that easy. Uh, so we've got a wine kit that's supplied from our friends at RJ's Craft Winemaking. Thank you for it. Delicious. Uh, so basically, like I've said before on the kits, it's very important to just read the instructions through, really follow them. Uh, it's literally got step by step here. Um, if you've ever baked a cake or followed any sort of recipe, it's literally as easy as that. But do pay attention to them and read them all the way through before you actually do it so you know what's going to happen next. Uh, so our first step here, uh, we want to add enough uh, warm water so that we get up to the four liter mark, basically one gallon. So that's down just around the one line here. Right on, there we are. Cool, so once that is added, we are gonna open our bentonite. And that is gonna get dissolved into this first pack of water. Just sprinkle that in there. Give it a little stir, everything has been sanitized and ready for us. Oh, perfect. Awesome. All right, now that we've got our bentonite in, it's time to add our juice into our fermenter. So we've got it pretty much at the same level, so it's easy here. So we're just gonna pop the top of the juice bag off real simple, and we are gonna add the juice into the fast ferment. Nice little easy pour. It's better to go slow and take it easy than rush. Once we've got all the juice into the bag, we want to try to make sure we get as much of it as we can on the first shot. Perfect. Now we're going to take the bag and we are going to add a little bit more water so that we can rinse everything out and get absolutely all the juice as we possibly can. Fill it up, swish, swish it around. Into the fermenter we go. Perfect. All right, so we got all our juices in our fermenter here. Uh, we wanna make sure that we got it topped up right to the 23 liter mark, so we're pretty much perfect right there. Like it, um, and we need to check our temp just to make sure that we're right in between where it should be, around 70 degrees, just over 75 is good, perfect. Right on, so temp is checked. Now before we put our yeast in and everything, we're gonna take a quick hydrometer reading. Uh, so like you, like we like using the fast ferment sampling port. You can use a wine thief to take one out the top, but sampling port's easy, it's convenient, so we just take, simply take the test jar down, port opens up, Take off a small sample, and we are gonna take our hydrometer reading. Sweet, so hydrometer reading is looking good. That can zip back in. Perfect, so our last thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna record that hydrometer reading in a bit. We're gonna get our yeast in there. So we're not gonna, sometimes you can rehydrate your yeast, but I think we're okay just doing it this way, a little sprinkle. We like keeping it easy, keeping it simple. As much, a little sprinkle around, try to as much as you can, and we aren't gonna stir it because, uh, well, instructions say not to stir it. So, easy as that. Now we'll put the uh, lid on, we got our gasket in there. Lid goes on, we got a little bit of sanitizer in our airlock, and we are ready to start the fermenting process. Fermenter is on, sealed, looking good. Last thing we'll do to start everything off is just open the valve up so we can start it. All right, we got our fermenter set up. Last thing we're gonna do, just add a little bit of sanitizer to our airlock here. Um, typically, it's gonna take two or three days before we get some activity in the airlock. It might be a little sooner. It really depends on uh, the wine or beer style that you're making. All right, so we've been doing our fermenting, keeping an eye on our gravity and whatnot, and it's time to go into our degassing, clearing, and stabilization stage. Uh, so I just want to point out, we haven't done a collection ball changeout. Um, the sediment line has not reached over the valve, so there's really no need to switch it out. And that's actually going to save some uh, wine, because if we just dump it, there's no point doing that. Um, so basically, to start our degas, before we do anything, we're going to shut the valve off. So we want to separate the sediment that's down here with your good wine up top. Once it's shut off and separated, we're going to open it up get a nice big spoon so that we can start stirring. 
key gas will take a few minutes. Right on. Okay. Got a nice spoon. A little sanitizer, keep it clean. And basically, just a nice steady stir. So we want to make sure that we're doing it uh, as well as we can. We're going to degas for about 10 minutes, so we want to make sure that uh, we're stirring really well and everything is nice and degassed. All right, so our degassing's done. My arms are sore from stirring so much, and we're ready to get onto our clearing and stabilization. So basically, it's as easy as following the instructions on the recipe. Uh, we're going to add our sulfate. So we're going to open the pack up. And once we get her dumped in, we are going to stir it to mix it in really nice and well. Uh, I have already done my spoon, so my spoon is nice and clean. And basically, as we're getting it in, we're going to stir it up real good. Now our valve's all closed at the bottom, so nothing's going down into the bottom of the fermenter. It's all staying up in the top so that we can get it in. really depends on what kit you're doing. Some kits will have different uh, ingredients going in, so just follow the instructions. Perfect. So that pack is done, stirred in nice. So our second pack to go in is our pota uh, potassium sorbet. It's basically the same thing, identical. And we'll get the pack nice and open. I like to dump her in while I'm stirring, so it mixes really well. Fantastic. And that's that. Okay. All right, so we're gonna continue to add our stabilization ingredients here. Uh, so this is our next one going in. We're gonna cut the pack because it makes it a little easier. And is it there it goes ready to go? Make sure we get everything in there. And and this instructions, it says once it's in, we need to stir it really good for the next minute before we add any the next uh, the next package. All right, so we've been stirring this vigorously for about a minute now, and we're gonna let it wait for another five minutes before we add anything else. Right on, so uh, we've waited our five minutes. We're ready to add our next ingredient. I'll just point out, um, so when I'm waiting before, uh, you know, while the unit's open, it's nice to have the lid back on it so that we're not exposing it to oxygen. It's good to, you know, keep it closed up as much as you can. Uh, so perfect, our next one, we just gotta cut the quarter off her. And same thing, we will stir while we are adding so that it all mixes in really good. This is our last, Last package we need to add, and then we are gonna close it back up and let it wait for another oh, 25 days or so. Check our gravity readings, make sure we're on the right schedule. Yeah, just make sure we get everything in there, it's all good and stuff. Perfect, stir it up. Make sure everything's dissolved and mixed well. Right on. Cool. Looking good. So our last kind of two steps here. We'll get the lid back on. Get it nice and sealed up. Perfect. Right on. Nice and snug. Good. And then uh, before that's uh, everything's in and added, we're going to open up the valve so that as it clears, everything comes down, settles in the ball. Before bottling, we'll remove the ball, the ball, uh, clean everything out, and then all our good wine will go right into the bottle. So uh, we've got about another 25 days until that happens. So we'll see you soon. Hey everybody! All right, it's uh, bottling day with the wine here today. Uh, real easy, simple, straightforward. Uh, so basically, the first thing we're going to do. Uh, because we're going to be sucking the wine out of the bottom here, siphoning it out. We're going to take the airlock out just so that we don't suck any of the airlock uh, stuff back in it. Um, so we're going to attach our filling hose. It's really easy. Uh, we're going to turn the valve off, put the hose on, 
So we like uh, having a little plate under it. Um, there's gonna be a little drip here, so the plate will keep everything nice and clean and dry. So basically the valve goes off, shut the valve off, and we're gonna pop off the ball here. The ball will just slide off nice and easy. Perfect, as easy as that. Scoop it out, perfect. All right, so now we are gonna hook up our bottling hose here. So we just feed the little attachment right onto the bottom. Perfect. As easy as that. Cool, so that's on. Uh, so we got our little hose clamp here. So we wanna, before we open up the valve, definitely wanna make sure the hose clamp is closed up and tight and sealed. We wanna leave a little bit of room on the bottom here so we got some uh, room to go into our bottles. We're doing it. Um, so when we open up the valve, uh, we don't want to open up the full way because there's a lot of pressure up here, tons of fluid. This little hose clamp down here will have a hard time holding all this back. So when we open up our valve, just want to do it even not even a quarter way, about an eighth of the way, just so that you can get a bit of uh, a bit of wine coming into it. That's about right. Perfect. All right, so that's all set. So time to go into our first bottle. Basically, hose goes in the bottle here. We will open up our clamp. And I just want to keep an eye on it. I want to leave about an inch in the top of the bottle or so. Perfect, just like that. Some clamp comes off. And now we'll get a little cork in the top. So this is our double lever corker here that comes in our starter kits. Works really good. So I just find the top of the bottle. Goes on, little sides on it. Boom. There we go. All bottled. So basically we've got about 30 of those we need to do to get our full batch. But that is how you fast ferment and make wine. Real easy, straightforward, and I know that what is gonna come out of this bottle, we need to do a little bottle aging. So in about 30 days, maybe two months, if you wanna leave it for six months, even great. This is gonna be a delicious, delicious homemade wine. Thanks very much for watching our videos. If you guys ever needed a hand, uh, need help at all, suggestions, feedback, anything, please feel free to reach out to us. Our 1-800 number literally goes to our cell phones and we're always on our email, so drop us a line, say what's up. Thanks very much, take care. Cheers. Cheers.